Hey, hello, and welcome to our first look at Way of the Hunter. Coming soon to PC and, of course, the cavalcade of consoles, this ultra-realistic hunting simulator with realistic graphics and the ability to turn off the HUD and all sorts of other tracking features make it not only a challenging simulator, but also a game that seems a lot of fun to play for newbies and for people who are super casual, such as myself. Now, me, myself, personally, I've gone duck hunting and deer hunting, pheasant and grouse a few times, and of course deer hunting is probably the most exciting of all of this, and the game does a good job of simulating that environment in both North America and Transylvania, as well as many realistic rifles and equipment that's used in the actual hunt. This game is uh, quite immersive, I'd say, with a lot of good music and sound and such in not only the menus, but also, of course, when you're out in the field and walking around. It's very gorgeous to so take it very slow, and the adventure mode is uh, probably my most favorite so far, with the ultra-realistic modes removing all the HUDs and allow you to explore and navigate yourself. The adventure mode giving you, of course, a blend of fast travel and also more convenient game mechanics. So something for everybody, including multiplayer. You'll be able to play this with friends and uh, possibly cross-play too as it comes to more than likely Game Pass and many other systems and consoles as well. I've yet to see a few things on that, but I'm here mostly to play the game and kind of take a look around the world and see what it looks and feels like. So thanks for joining me here today. Thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. Leave it a like and let me know what you think of the game down below. We have some other great, exciting hunting and fishing simulators coming soon with Way of the Hunter coming very soon. And of course, also another game called The Angler from the same makers of Call of the Wild. So let me know what you think between the two games, which one you think has uh, different types of features that you like, maybe what you think could be different in the future or that you'd like to see changed, and something that possibly could be added for more DLC or an update. Who knows? All right, let's jump into our first look at Way of the Hunter. Elliot Willow speaking. Hey, Grandpa. I'm getting closer to the lodge. Your phone magically erased all the contacts again? River. Nurse Ellen was helping me with it, but she said she doesn't know how these old-fashioned phones work. I'll help you with it when you return. Oh, I'm so grateful you decided to help me with the Bear Den Ranch. Competition is growing every day. Ethically hunted meat with government inspection? Sounds like a pretty niche market. Uh, you'd be surprised. But the demand is rising every day. And with the hoax about the disease spreading... Uh, what? I, I can't hear you. River, can you hear me better now? Yep, way better. The service in the valley is really bad, so I'll make it quick. I've sent you a package a day ago, but I'm not sure when it will arrive. Just make yourself at home and... Maybe greet your old friend Echo. You know, it's been a while. Oh god, I forgot about her. How long has it been? Ten years. I hope you didn't forget the key. Oh god, I did. What should I do? <laughs> Don't worry. The spare is in the usual spot. <laughs> All right, I'm here. I'll call you later. And be nice to the nurses. But tell them to be nice to me. I'm always a gentleman. <laughs> and kiddo, or I guess I should start calling you River now. 
Welcome to the Nespers Valley. Well, it is absolutely beautiful. I gotta say that for sure. At least the landscape. Gorgeous rolling mountains, pine trees, and fir trees, and so much more everywhere. I'm down with this type of landscape. Whenever I play a train simulator or any sort of like survival sim, this is where I want to be. Especially with all of those beautiful rivers and stuff too. Incredible. Is that a bear? Great. Alright, well I'm out of here. Alright, let's head inside the uh, cabin where Grandpa wants us to uh, equip our old rifle. Or his old rifle from the gun safe and attach a scope to it. Oh, a little taxidermy going on here too. We can actually edit pretty much every one of the stands inside the uh, cabin. I guess this serves not only as just a cabin for us to live, but also as kind of a business operations, like HQ, for our ethically hunted meat that we're going to be uh, getting with Grandpa, I guess, in order to sell it to restaurants for some cash. All right, well, there's our storage, and there's Grandpa's old rifle. It's a lever action, uh, 6 mag capacity, 30-30 Winchester hunting tier 4. So basically, I don't know, badgers and maybe uh, beavers, who knows. Uh, the Leopold VX... Freedom 2X, 7X33. Uh, so this is a uh, 2 to 7 magnification uh, with lens quality low and uh, lens size 33 millimeters. Luckily, we'll be able to buy all sorts of things in this game, including collars and primary, secondary weapons and some gear too. So we should be able to uh, do all sorts of shopping. Here's all the different types of weapons in the game. I haven't seen any sort of bows or crossbows, but for the most part for a game that focuses uh, on rifles, I would imagine, uh, we can... Eventually, of course, get the right rifle for the right situation, or at least the right uh, prey or hunt, I suppose. So, uh, pretty cool stuff there as well. Some gear or, again, collars, different types of um, binoculars too. Moose collar, jackrabbit, goose, duck, hog, red deer, uh, deer grunt, roe, and elk collar. And, of course, attachments too, which pretty much are all sorts of uh, different sites and, uh, yeah, all sorts of good stuff here. And we can also buy licenses to other territories. So again, there is the uh, Valley and Transylvania too, with uh, four locations within the main location. So there's two places to go that we can uh, go between. Anytime that we go between the maps too, we're also allowed to switch the difficulty. So you can go back to the escape menu basically to turn up or down the difficulty based on if you want assistance or not. We can store all sorts of stuff here too and the option to change between day and night. Uh, by simply sleeping here. We can also customize the car. The car we pulled up in, uh, we can change uh, minor changes to it. Nothing too fancy, but just the uh, color and uh, the layout. I think if they're going to do a menu like this, they should probably allow us to do a little bit more. Like, for example, maybe throw this bumper on the yellow Jeep. And Yeah, it's a hunting game, not a driving simulator. So I don't expect the most, you know, deepest uh, detailed driving mechanics. But uh, I guess we'll go with the uh, the yellow one for now and see if it changes out there for us. All right, we're also going to need to grab the scope for Grandpa's rifle. So let's do that. And that should be everything we need. Perfect. All right, let's uh, change gear then. Don't want to have the gun out in the house. So we'll head upstairs to uh, go to the northwest balcony of the second floor to look around. So uh, the house basically is just uh, HQ. There's not really much else, uh, else for us to do here except for... Um, Re-equipped rifles and such. I think we might be able to do that at the back of the truck, but we won't be able to buy them from the truck. We have to go uh, back to a laptop in order to do that. All right, use the binoculars to look at the checkpoints. So the road, there's a bridge out there, and then there's another far-off destination that we're about to drive to. Let's go ahead and pull out our uh, binoculars here. We'll put the rifle away, and there we are. There's the road. There's the bridge. And up there is the uh, spot where we're going to go. Soon, Echo. Yeah. All to our old childhood friend, Echo, I suppose. I don't mind a game that has a story like this to make it not just a, um, you know, a bland hunting simulator where it's just uh, shoot, 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 get money, and then go buy new weapons and stuff and put everything on display. These um, displays are really nice for taxidermy, but it is nice that there's much more to do than just buy gun, um, unlock license. There's a little bit of a story, and I appreciate that. And... Uh, Call of the Wild does that too. Otherwise, it's just location and animals in location and just shoot, shoot, shoot. Um, which is fun too, but um, I, I appreciate the attempt. Okay, so this is a map of the valley. You've discovered Nesper's Valley Grassland Habitat. 
open country for beginners and seasoned veterans alike. The meadows serve as prime feeding areas for both pheasants and badgers. Undisturbed grasslands with tall grass have the potential to hold a lot of small, but also some bigger game. Okay. All right, so they want us to head out to the car there. We're going to take a quick peek at the computer, too. There's some really weird, shady stuff going on in this game. At this point, developers have dropped, like, a story um, campaign, or, or, I mean, like, a story trailer over the overview of what's going on. But, uh, I don't know, for a hunting simulator, kind of weird to open up the thing that says, Don't contact my son. Disease spreading. Like, uh, is this a zombie simulator or what? But, anyway, yeah. So, there's all the weapons again, and uh, all the different attachments and things that we can get. So, the storage is also in the back of the truck. I believe anything that we um, bring with us, like, for example, if we happen to bring a uh, couple of extra collars or something like that, I want to put those away, we can do that in the truck. And we must be a director or something like that. Here's Way of the Hunter, Fleet Hunter, and Sand. Oh, there we are. River Knox. Oh, we're a stuntman. Interesting. Okay. Kind of weird how they <laughs> wrote that on a movie poster. I thought we were a director. Um, okay. Well, let's leave. Yeah, stuntmen usually get credited not as like a, I don't know, thing written on the bottom, but whatever. They could have been in Photoshop to make Grandpa proud. All right, we're going to get in the truck now again. It's not a driving simulator, but the driving is pretty good in this one. And let's see if it saved our changes for the truck. But I think any time that we want to change the truck, though, we can go over to this P. We can uh, spawn it at multiple parking areas in the map, and uh, we'll go with select vehicle. There it is, active. We'll go with the yellow one, yeah. So anytime that we, uh, I don't know, if we get separated from the truck or something like that, we don't want to do fast travel, we just find one of those parking locations and spawn the truck. All right, this truck is very loud. Okay. Well, I've turned down the master volume, but it looks like this volume is not attached to the sound volume in the game, so... In order to turn the engine down, you got to turn down all the sounds in the game. A little annoying. Anyway, I'm hoping for more vehicles in the game as well. It would be also interesting to see seasons in this game too, but I don't think uh, that's something uh, that we see. But it would be very cool, very cool to be able to see this valley go through the changes of, of course, winter and spring and fall and whatnot. And then, of course, maybe to switch to a, uh, you know, a quad or... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, they're actually smart enough to go away. Okay. <laughs> they almost landed inside the truck. Anyway, it would be nice to switch between the uh, different vehicles for different seasons. Right now, it's very nice to... Uh, uh, it seems like mid to late summer to drive around in the Jeep. But uh, a quad would be really cool in the fall. And, of course, a uh, snowmobile in the winter. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful. Look at that. Now, the river's probably the best part about this game. They look very, very believable. All right, he wants us to uh, park up here. I think we'll leave the car right about here and proceed on foot. We're supposed to park down there by the fence, but, you know, who wants to walk? Looks like the truck also goes into a... Uh, handbrake mode as well. Parking brakes on when you leave. Alright, so we're looking for a uh, ladder, and then we gotta climb up. After this, we're gonna do a little bit of, uh, I guess, shooting on the range for zeroing the rifle. Then we're gonna go shoot some badgers, and then we're gonna go deer hunting. And that will conclude the tutorial. So if you're looking to play multiplayer, you're at least gonna have to do all the things you see here so far. And then you can switch it over to uh, multiplayer to go to any of the other maps. I believe you're also allowed to freely play on the Transylvania map without any sort of story, too, so you can kind of just uh, leave all that and uh, or leave this place behind and just go there. I don't think there's two separate stories or characters um, that have anything to do with each other or are unrelated. But it could be that we live in Transylvania part-time for our movie business. Who knows? Alright, so the uh, water... Very important in this game, too, by the way. Rivers, of course, create a lot of noise, so if you're hunting something along the river, you're going to be able to really conceal all of your movement and stuff. got to say, though, the world looks really gorgeous. Very, very well done. Lighting very good, too. 
And uh, I do like how it uh, seems to move almost in real time where, you know, if it's uh, noon and you wait, you play for three hours, I think it'll only be 3 p.m. when you uh, get a little further on. So, kind of cool that it doesn't, within 20 minutes, go from like noon to 5 p.m. to midnight within just a few minutes. Okay, this is what we're looking for. Now, I haven't seen any options to customize our character either in terms Here of camouflage are. or ways to uh, conceal ourselves, but damn. Wow. That's incredible, man. So there's the house. We drove down across the uh, bridge over the river there. Look at this. Yeah, this is really, really good. This is definitely where I want to do hunting or building or surviving. So the landscape, the, uh, I guess the, the stage here is set and it's beautiful. All right, let's go uh, chat with Echo then. And you'll see why we call her Echo in a minute. Long time no see, my friend. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we can fast travel now, but, um... So if we want to go back to the house, or the, uh, shooting range, we can do it from here. So we don't have to go back down and, uh, drive back. But we can if we want to. So the immersion is all up to you. It's your choice on whether you want to do what you do a lot in hunting, which is uh, a lot of walking to, or, uh, just fast travel. Because it's a game, after all. We're gonna go to here to the Bear Den range to, uh, zero the rifle. And the car, uh, once we teleport back to the house, will be there for us. Fast travel's really quick, though. All right, zero aiming and holding breath. Grab uh, Grandpa's rifle. And we're going to do some shooting. All right, zero the rifle while aiming through the scope at just for 50 meters. All right. There we go. Hit a deer at 50 meters. Very narrow range. Oh, there's a few lanes. Okay. Oh, look at the effects on the scope, too, by the way. Pretty good, actually. I'm starting to see more and more games uh, adopt what I'm going to have to call, like, the, the Tarkov immersion, where Tarkov is the first game that I started to see put in a lot of the, um, I forget what you call it, uh, Scope Shadow, or whatever the technique, oh, the uh, effect is called when you're looking down your scope like that, but very cool. All right, let's go ahead and hit our deer at 50. Inside. Vitals hit. That would be a good shot. Zero for 150. That's 100. But I guess they want us to hit the 100 with the 150? Wait, is there that much bullet drop? That doesn't seem right. Grandpa wants to keep his shooting skills sharp, but 200 meters? Way oh. too far for a safety or shot. I guess we were skipping the... 100. Okay. Hmm. Looks like there's a note over there. All right, not bad. Hey, Wallace. Don't forget to take care of the badgers wreaking havoc behind the lodge. Sincerely, myself. You forgetful geezer. Uh, thanks, Grandpa. All right, we're going to go uh, take care of the badgers behind the lodge. So let's go back to the lodge, and then we'll go to a hunting stand back there. I guess we'll put this away for now and walk there. All right, enter the hunting stand near the badger calamity. So our goal now is basically just to shoot one badger. We're going to identify a few things about sound and how animals, animals uh, wander around and stuff like that. So, All right. But I've got to say, though, I'm really appreciative of games such as uh, Hunt Showdown and also, uh, for example, Generation Zero and Escape from Tarkov really making the worlds look uh, more and more gorgeous. But really, I like this game a lot for the ability to slow it on down and not, not be worried about other, you know, enemies and such around you. Uh, this is just a hunting simulator, a nice, you know, enjoy your time in the woods and, uh, of course, very valuable skill of... Uh, shooting an animal uh, safely and effectively and humanely 
and uh, being able to harvest it as well. And to do so in a game is uh, pretty good, where, of course, the developers of this and hunting games similar to this or fishing games really need to balance out There he is. We'll go to the uh, <laughs> stand first. Sorry, I caught the corner of my eye, but yes, uh, they really need to balance out, uh, you know, making it fun and satisfying without getting boring and tedious. However, again, this game gives you the options, at least, hey, fellers, to uh, control uh, your game, how difficult you want it to be. Of course, you can fast travel or walk, take your time. That's satisfying, man. I, options are good. That's all I'm saying. If they gave us a thousand guns to choose from with so 250 locations, that's good. That's unusual. Badges are definitely overpopulated in this area. Well, hold on. Oh, blood trail. All right, it looks like he's heading at uh, 040. Looks like we've got him. Cool, let's go trace the blood trail. I think your first shot is set up to always just graze them, no matter where you shoot them, so that way you can learn to follow the blood trail. But it's going to be pretty important to do it right when you shoot a deer. You don't want to <laughs> follow a deer for 3,000 miles through the woods. Uh, now, we can shoot multiple badger here, too, and turn them in for money. So, uh, of course, that's going to be the most uh, profitable way for us to make cash is by uh, basically just shooting animals and then selling the meat. Uh, there might be other quests and things to do in order to make cash, too, so that way we can kind of experience more of the game. There's quite a few things to buy, the equipment, the rifles, scopes, and uh, permits and such. So, of course, you want a uh, hunting game to be a little bit of a grind, but... Other opportunities to, to get it as well. So there might be special missions coming in from the laptop. Can we actually see the blood trail here? Let's see. If the... Uh, he went through this bush here. But does our hunter... Does our hunter sense show us? Well, it's highlighting where the uh, carcass is, but... I can actually see a bl Oh, there we are. Yep, okay. We gotta get very close to see that, though. Ah, and there it goes. Okay. Yep. Trail of blood leading all the way to our little friend here. Oof. Not a great shot, but if you even get a lung shot, I think they'll run on you. Although, not bad. Uh, I think our goal here is to taxidermy. Let's see here. Find the badger, claim, and harvest. All right, so that is essentially the uh, taxidermy. And there we go. Oh, we want to do it again, then. I should have shot a another one, then, while I had the advantage. Fitness and gene pool. Interesting. Now, this game also has, speaking of which... Uh, a wonderful little character skills set. So, of course, the more we use bolt action, lever action, brake action, and things like being outdoors and exploring and simply just walking uh, will give us extra types of uh, bonuses. And then, of course, the taxidermy assistant will give us the option to... Um, oh, wow. Apparently, we got a top hunt rating on that first harvest. Nice. Ah, they're giving it to you for free to be nice. But anyway, the uh, perks screen, of course, we can eventually grind out and then spend... Uh, points on perks or at least see what our perks are by basically doing it ourselves so travel 15 kilometers in an upright stance will give us the hiker thing so if you don't fax travel you get a little bit of a benefit for that probably it'll help you to move a little more silently but at a top speed that kind of thing all right uh there's the stand uh i could go back there but i think we'll just wait a minute or two Oh, that's a badger. We're also uh, not in a good position for the wind, but as you saw earlier, the badgers were pretty pretty calm. But again, remember, the 
area we're in is a tutorial, so I think some of the animal AI is just dumbed down, so that way you can kind of get used to it versus other games. Oh, there you are. All right, went quick. <sighs> ah. Looks like it's one of their uh, little dens. Butterflies? Apparently they're rarely here though. Even though they're literally running around this area. Okay. Alright, let's go up into the stand. Now we wait. Yeah, there we go. One to our left. At about 100 meters. Got him. Oh, there's another one. Well, one's good enough. <laughs> They're pretty fun to shoot. A whole infestation, so there you go. Now, one thing I was trying to check there to see is if our... end of our rifle would go past a wooden object and actually stop us from uh, to, d to doing that. And it actually looks like it does. Like, it'll, it'll pull the rifle down as you pass a object like that. So, as you can see... That's pretty cool. So if you're standing next to a tree or something, very important that you know that uh, it would seem that the bullets come out of the end of the rifle. Some games, the hit detection is based on the scope, but this is based on the rifle, and the rifle uh, end of it actually is a solid object that can actually touch trees and things like that. So if you stand too close to the edge of a tree, it won't, it won't let you pull up your rifle, that kind of thing. There's no way you could shoot, so you got to, like, stand outside of it. All right, where's our... Uh, whoa. Oh, red fox. Interesting. Little foxes were having a little meal here. Alright, where's our uh, little badger friend? Already lost him. There he is. Pretty good shot, I, th I think. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Perfect. Very nice. Which one has a white butt? Well, we can only be talking about deer. Okay, time to go back home and buy a new rifle and then go deer hunting. Not too bad. So, yeah, I'm not <laughs> not so skilled at these types of games, but I'm having a great time and really wish I uh, will put more time into these types of games, too, to become more patient and such. It's, you know, not Call of Duty, so it's hard to lose those uh, habits after so long. But, I mean, you know, when it's this beautiful like this and... When your money and such comes in from hunting, I like it. Now, one thing I wish these games would do is also allow you to be a little bit more of a survivalist, too, where you had to do things like, for example, purchase, um, you know, food and do a few other things as well. You know, you wouldn't just fully live off of hunting. You'd still want to go buy some other supplies from time to time. So a homesteading simulator, this is one step away from being that, if we could actually do some of those things. Cutting firewood and... Preparing for survival, that type of thing. And not survival being like, you know, end of the world apocalypse or, um, you know, some sort of zombie survival. No, I want to just do a homestead where certain things just need to be done out here because that's what life is, you know. Although it seems like we still have an internet connection and cable. <laughs> but you get my point. All right, let's head on in. All right, time to grab the Remington 783 bolt action. 
which is more suitable for a deer hunt. And that's what we're going to be hunting with now. So we're buying the Remington 783. And it looks like we've got, yeah, about 1550 bucks now from those uh, taxidermies from before. So that's a bolt action, four capacity, 0 0.243 Winchester. Um, hunting tier five. And then we're just going to have to off... Uh, Grandpa's old rifle, or unequip it, and then equip the new Remington with the scope. There we are. Uh, I shouldn't use this bad boy for more than 100 meters. All right, so he wants us to basically get within 100 meters of a deer and start shooting. But, of course, we want to shoot the vital organs, the heart, the lungs, etc. Alright, reached the upper grassland area. So we'll recall our jeep now, and we'll basically go over there. Now, I don't think we'd actually fast travel to that location until we've discovered uh, the location itself. And um, I don't think we can actually fast travel to some of those positions, like, for example, where we found the American Badger, and we found the... Um, uh, the hunting stand. We can't actually fast travel to those. We have to fast travel to a nearby parking lot, which in this case is the house. So we just have to walk to the stand where the badgers were. But here we're going to have to actually drive to where the deer are. So that's the southern part of the uh, place. So you can kind of see how big the map is now. I mean, we've only, all we've done so far is just driven across a river. You can get a real feel for how big this map is. And there's two maps. So we've only discovered maybe. I actually, they should give us a percentage. This has got to be like, what, one, two, three percent? Yeah. I'm actually getting some, interestingly enough, Far Cry 5 vibes with this, too. But anyway, let's go ahead and spawn our car. There we are. And we'll go drive and do some deer hunting. Now, uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to uh, basically just drive there, and then we're going to uh, see a hunt in which I've already completed where pretty interesting tactics uh, testing out things in the woods to see how the deer react to sound and how they react to uh, you know me sneaking up on them and such since we're in adventure mode they're a little dumber than you'd normally imagine so um, yeah let's get over there and go hunt some deer all right we got some deer over here and we'll approach across the river now this section from here on out has been pre-recorded as I wanted to be focused on the hunt as I tried to get used to the stealth mechanics for keeping away from animals and uh, also disguising my scent and such. As you can see, we're approaching uh, from pretty much the opposite side of where animals can smell us. In this case, it'll be uh, mule deer and white-tailed deer. And uh, I've also, at this point of recording this audio section, have played a lot more of the game at this point. And man, it really opens up and it gets a lot more interesting than what I was thinking it would be. Uh, in terms of the diversity of animals that we would hunt and kind of story-based elements that make it a little bit more different and interesting than just a hunt for points and for money in order to unlock things. It certainly has those elements too, uh, but it is fun to be able to actually go and explore a little bit more. And, of course, the game giving you uh, reasons to go to those places. Kind of like how when you explore in you know Red Dead Redemption or in Grand Theft Auto or many of those open world games where they let you bake, uh, take baby steps and get used to all the area around you, and then eventually venture further and further away from your HQ. And of course, with this game having multiple fast travel points and uh, different locations you can go to with different smaller cabins that you can stop at, um, then it's a really great opportunity, I think, to show the different diverse landscapes and biomes that can be within this biome as well. For example, going into the north is where we'll be doing duck hunting, and so thus there's uh, automatic shotguns and uh, semi-automatic shotguns and breech or brake shotguns too that you can load in for duck hunting or for pheasants, which you'll be doing after this. A lot of pheasants found by the home, so as you step outside, I mean literally at the bear, uh, was it bear den cabin or whatever it may be, um, where our granddad's home is, right behind the house is the... Uh, <laughs> All the different types of critters we've been hunting, including, uh, I don't even want to spoil it, but there's something over there too where we were hunting the badgers. But there's badgers behind the house. Of course, we got the little pheasants in front of the house, and also some red foxes nearby too. So there's a lot of animals just within uh, literally walking distance of the house. Another great thing about this game too is that the biggest fear of these hunting games is that it can be a very slow, arduous walking simulator, and that is truly painfully boring and uninteresting. 
But lucky for us, this game makes it worth your while by walking around. You find a lot of areas for identifying the uh, movement patterns of deer and where animals may go to lay down to uh, sleep or to eat or to do uh, whatever. And so by exploring in detail one area's habitat for, for example, deer, you can stumble across the black bear den and uh, also know that information for the future. So it's really beneficial to be able to go uh, on foot very slow and explore all the areas around us. Right now we're trying to stay as stealthily as possible around the deer. And so I think that's going to really help us uh, to kind of keep out of the line of sight. And in this adventure mode, it seems like the game gives you some pretty uh, obvious hints that if you get a little closer to the deer that they'll run away, they all start to look at you before they uh, jolt off. And again, we're playing on the second level difficulty here. So there's like a super easy mode, easy mode, normal mode, and I would just say like total realism mode where all the uh, HUD that you see is removed from the screen. And um, I wonder how that's going to actually play out for things like zeroing your rifle without being able to see uh, anything from the scope. So we're going to try to get a side shot on these deer. A lot of the times it looks like deer do not move in this game. They'll go through an animation of uh, looking down and eating or drinking uh, wherever they happen to be, but they don't actually kind of wander around. They don't often turn their body, uh, watching them for many minutes at a time. Uh, it seems like they just kind of freeze in place, and so you've got to identify where they're all looking and then just try to, you know, creep up on the ones that are probably looking the least amount in that direction and then uh, string the, uh, spring the trap on them. Just a minute ago, you saw the deer stand, where there's a lot of stands in areas that uh, overlook habitats for a lot of uh, different critters and creatures in the area. And uh, another thing you can do is basically go to those stands and pretty much from there identify an area. Um, once you find the question mark, it'll show the stand. You go to the stand and then you can basically see what animals are there, such as deer and uh, white-tailed deer or roe or jackrabbit, whatever. And it looks like there's a lot of great animals, a uh, wide variety of sizes too. So there, I believe the game even has a 22 in it. So you can go do th things like uh, shooting some of those smaller animals as well. The duck hunting and the pheasant hunting is a lot of fun. The duck hunting, of course, uh, allowing you to uh, jump up on some uh, ducks and scare them out of the water so you can shoot them. And it's the same fun with the pheasant, too, especially to flush them out of a uh, wood line or something like that. might be a lot more interesting in multiplayer because you can coordinate with a friend uh, to come up, you know, on, for example, the opposite side of ducks or something like that and have them flee, you know, left to right in front of you and then have them basically present themselves at the perfect uh, range, that type of thing, at the perfect uh, altitude. A lot of fun to shoot the shotguns. Absolutely a lot of fun to shoot the shotguns. Very fun to shoot the rifle, too, and get a um, great shot in the vitals of a deer. Getting more used to the game, I've got to say that, uh, you know, I was thinking it would be more arcadey than more simulator, but it does seem to be somewhere in the middle, comparing it to uh, Call of the Wild. Again, not really giving the game a review or anything like that, but, c but compared to another game that's been around for a while, I think this does a pretty good job of at least having a very large and diverse open world where each different area kind of simulates somewhat of a different uh, biome but within what seems to be the American uh, Pacific Northwest, or at least somewhere around there. A whole mix of areas like Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, um, areas around the Pacific Northwest and the Rockies. I'd say it extends and goes multiple directions. Here we see the deer kind of peeking at us, trying to hope that one of these deer here turns to the side and uh, you know presents the shot. And uh, not going to cooperate. Now, we can always get a headshot, too. That's not going to look so great if we go to do a taxidermy. And, of course, uh, you do get raided in your kills. And you will get a lot more money for killing animals more ethically and, of course, uh, humanely. And, of course, taking your time to do it the right way is probably the biggest benefit in the game to actually making more money. It takes a little bit more time, but, you know, money is just going to unlock things. Unfortunately, it looks like there's no way to sell your weapons, too. So when you get uh, a rifle unlocked, you're basically paying an unlock fee, but luckily there's unlimited ammo. And uh, trying some of the calls, too, for example, duck and deer, it seems like it is the same leveling system from Call of the Wild, where the more animals that you lure with it, the more you use it, uh, your levels will go higher. So at this point, uh, in this game, I've not used a uh, call in this recording, but I have used it after a live stream, and I can tell you it works a little bit more interesting for deer, uh, although I didn't actually get it to work. It seems like there'll be some bonuses for your perks for actually killing an animal 
that's been attracted by a coal. So in this game, of course, the more you walk, the more points that you'll get for walking. Uh, extra perks <clears throat> that will be unlocked by you actually walking around. And, um, of course, then you get a reduced detection uh, radius, like sound and, and uh, noise detection from just walking. So uh, walking everywhere, crouching everywhere, using the bolt action, using the lever action, pump action, shotguns, brakes, all the different types of uh, guns gives you some good benefit. Here they <laughs> so here they were glitching out a little bit. And uh, interestingly enough, I wasn't sure if one of them had their face in the ground. I was trying to go for a buck, which I think I was aiming at there, yeah. And there's just, like, no hope. I don't know if I could take the shot anymore. So I wanted to close in and see what may have happened. It could have just been, like, a visual lighting glitch. I, I don't know if the whole bodies went upside down. I don't know what it was. But I hadn't seen it since, so I'm not sure. And a great thing to consider, too, is sound muffling. I'm trying to see at this point if the loud river is actually uh, hiding any of the sound. And so I think it's a good idea to actually go close to the river and use it to try to mask your movement, at least in terms of sound. Not sure if it actually works that way, but I know that if you get somewhere just before about 50 meters away from the deer, they seem to, even if they don't have a line of sight on you, hear you no matter what. So, yeah. So getting a little bit closer to the deer, whether they can smell you or not, it just seems like they have an auto-detection to make it a little bit more fun, a little more challenging to at least stay probably about a, a 75 meters away and trying to, uh, you know, take the meter at about f uh, the shot at about 50 meters, somewhere between there. So, so trying to uh, conceal myself by all the different types of sticks and branches and logs. And it looks like the deer is starting to spot us here, and it'll be about time to take that shot. And there she goes. A very nice hit. Now, I've had time to uh, test out the game's hunting detection mode, or the hunter sense, and get a little bit more used to what it's like to track a blood trail. And you've got to get really close, even with the hunter sense, to be able to actually find where the deer uh, may have run off to. And so... Uh, you'll have to find, of course, the initial hit area. You can see how badly they've been hit and how far they could run from the initial hit. So it's good to first go to where you shot them and then follow the blood trail from there to see how bad the wound is and how could how good they could have, uh, uh, have gone. How far they could have gone, how quickly they could have gone, and how good your hit was to consider, you know, if it's good a good hit, good shot. And here we also found ourselves a, a pheasant uh, area as well. So great to look around. Getting lost and not knowing where you're going is uh, beneficial in this game. So there we go. Clean hit. Didn't go too far there. About 50 meters um, or so from the uh, hit point. A clean kill. Uh, still trying to go for the heart shots. Uh, still aiming a little high for the lungs. But I eh, had to take a steam screenshot too. Proud of my uh, first kill there on a deer. Very nice shot through the, uh, right between the ribcage there, into the lungs, very close to the heart. And, of course, you get uh, the bullet camera and the overview telling you a little bit more about the uh, the deer, too. I didn't actually look into the overview hunt or trophy screens, but I think those are at least great for information regarding uh, the overview, giving you kind of like the information about the deer, its weight, um, rating, uh, your kill, that type of thing, and... Um, yeah, I believe the hunt also tells you a little bit more information about your uh, overall time and stuff for that. Very nice. And there we go. Introduction completed. Excellent. So from here on out, the game allows you to play multiplayer. So at this point, the tutorial is over and you can continue unlocking stuff by doing the campaign. Beneficial because you get a few extra dollars for doing some of the missions they give you, which are all based on a story. So, um, yeah, we're going to work our way back to the truck and then work our way back to the house. Kind of fun, actually, to be able to, instead of fast travel, walk everywhere and get a bonus. Uh, your perks and, of course, for discovery. And uh, like I mentioned, doing the campaign will allow you to get a lot more cash from, you know, someone will ask you, hey, go get a couple of pheasants for our restaurant. We want to start cooking pheasant on the menu. And um, instead of making, like, uh, I don't know, less than 200 for two pheasants, you get 600 for um 
doing what they'd ask you to do. So I've got to say, after spending a lot more time in the world in my live stream, I've got to say, really beautiful, very realistic. The world looks incredible. I think this game stands out with games like, for example, Hunt Showdown, uh, which is kind of a more uh, Battle Royale type PvP, PvE game, and also games like Generation Zero, which is the same engine that Call of the Wild runs on too. Uh, the Avalanche engine. So this is definitely on par with a really beautiful looking, very diverse and detailed uh, open world environment with a lot of different biomes. I think it really looks fantastic. So you can actually hear a lot of more deer kicking around too as we're scaring them off. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and r walk back to the car and uh, zip back up to the uh, house and then I'll see you very soon. Let's go. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a second. We got some deer. Hold on. All right, another hit. We'll go find him. All right, pretty cool. So not so bad. I like what I see so far for Way of the Hunter and hope that there's many more features and hunts and animals and things in the future added to the game new territories to go with and of course more friends to go hunting with pretty cool i must say all right everybody let me know what your thoughts down below remember there's also a photo mode for this game so let me know what you think uh, about you know taking pictures and hanging out in the woods is this a thing you'd be interested in or is this too similar to other games or much different let me know down below what you think and what you feel down below in the comment section and thank you very much for watching see you all soon